when God charged the children of Israel in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2 that, Be holy because I, the Lord you God, am holy. He wanted them to be distinct from the other nations. And so he charged them to live by his standards, not by the standards of the nations around them. The commands covered every aspect of spiritual, moral, family, work, and community life, including, loving your neighbor as yourself. Centuries later, Peter would repeat these same words to believers in Christ. As believers, we need to be, set apart, from the world unto the Lord. We have been called to live by God's standards, not by the standards of the world. We have not been called to be perfect but to be distinct from the world. And so in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 to 10, the apostle calls us a holy nation. That you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. As Christians, we are separated from the world. And we need to live out that reality in our day-to-day -day lives. Peter tells us how we are to do it in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 to 16. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. We usually associate holiness with obeying a set of rules. For many people, being holy, means obeying the Ten Commandments. But, for God, holiness is not a mere action or a set of behaviors to abide by. God's very essence, is holiness. How then can we set ourselves apart to reflect God's holiness in the way we live? Peter lays out how we are to live in the light of God's command to be holy. First, let us realize this truth. God is the embodiment of holiness, and so when he calls us to be holy, he is not satisfied with incomplete holiness. We can never accomplish holiness by trying hard. Jesus' death is absolutely essential for us to experience the new birth and new life in Christ. It is the righteousness of Christ that is now at work in us. Since God's holiness has been placed within us, we should make our best effort to live out that life of holiness as we keep our eyes on Christ. God expects us to strive for personal holiness which is demonstrated by the way we live our lives. God takes delight in us when we strive to be holy, to be like Christ. So he says, make every effort to be holy. This is not a passive acceptance of something. We should not confuse holiness with salvation. We accepted Christ's gift of salvation by faith, but when it comes to personal holiness we must put in an effort to be holy. So Paul tells us to, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling because we are doing so under the watchful eye of God. So where do we start? First, he says we must start by disciplining our minds. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13, he says. Therefore, preparing your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. We are being called to exercise self-control and stay alert both mentally and spiritually. How do we then develop this mindset? Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. It is those who are heavenly minded who do the most good on earth. The people who are actually advancing the kingdom of heaven are those who are heavenly minded. It is for this reason that Satan is always attacking the believer's mind with doubts, fears, worldly thoughts. Satan wants to keep the minds of believers focused on other things rather than focusing on what matters, and that is God and his kingdom. And so Paul says, in Philippians chapter 4 verses 8 to 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. What you focus your mind on, what you think of all the time is an indicator of your fruitfulness. Paul says in Romans chapter 8 verses 5 to 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, 
But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. To have a heavenly mindset requires rigorous discipline on the part of the believer. If you are not actively seeking things above, then you are not thinking in a heavenly manner. We are called to stop conforming or stop being pressed and molded into the pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. How do we have a heavenly mindset? God told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 6 to 9 that, These words I am commanding you today are to be upon your hearts. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as reminders on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. It is through scripture that we renew our minds and start to think on things that are noble, good, and righteous, that we start to think more like God. It is only through discipline and the study of the Word of God that we are able to have a mindset that is immovable from the things of God. Many Christians know nothing about a mind that has, set the Lord before them at all times and they will not be shaken, Psalm chapter 16 verse 8. Second, we must discipline ourselves through a careful study of the Word of God. We should make the Word of God our foundation. We must strive to do what it commands us to, and flee from all that it forbids. Jesus prayed for our holiness, and this is what he said. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John chapter 17 verse 17. The word of God makes us holy. Jesus said. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. John chapter 15 verse 3. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 22 to 23. Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart, for you have been born again not of seed which is perishable but imperishable, that is, through the living and enduring word of God. Third, a primary link to the holiness of God is through prayer. We are therefore called upon to develop a consistent prayer life. Be joyful always. Pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5:16-17. It is through the discipline of prayer that we develop a heavenly mindset and bring every thought captive before God. The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have the divine power to demolish strongholds. We tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 to 5. Fourth, we are called to live as obedient children of God. To this end, Peter encourages us. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14. Now that we have come to know Christ let us live in response to God's holiness, adopting his behavior as our pattern. There are some things we must give up, some programs and friends and hangout places we must let go. Anyone or anything that draws us back into our old lifestyle must go. As children of God, pursuing holiness, our priorities must reflect our new goals. Our lifestyle must reflect Christ because our lives are a witness to Christ. We must live like we are strangers in this world. Peter says. Since you call on a father who judges each one's work impartially, conduct yourselves in reverent fear during your stay as foreigners, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 17. When you live like a foreigner you are focused on going home, and so you see your earthly life with its challenges and struggles as only temporal. When Peter talks of reverent fear, he is referring to a humble, respectful awe of God, that motivates us to live obedient, holy lives. If this message has blessed you, you can support our work by subscribing and sharing it with friends and family. God bless you. Amen.